erupting volcano, a vision of hell, a destructive force unleashing more energy than an atomic bomb. Volcanic eruptions have obliterated entire cities, devastated civilizations, the Cretan, the Maya. Some even believe the kingdom of Atlantis was lost in a volcanic holocaust. In 1883, Krakatoa, an island west of Java, was torn in half by the most powerful natural explosion ever recorded. The shock of the blast spawned the greatest tidal wave in history, a wall of water 90 feet high that swept more than 36,000 human beings to their death. Another awesome catastrophe in the continuing toll volcanoes had inflicted. man's time on earth we have been at the mercy of volcanoes none more violent or awe-inspiring than Vesuvius the slumbering giant that broods over the Bay of Naples during recorded history it has erupted 70 times its most destructive eruption took place on August 24 79 AD that was the one that buried the legendary city of Pompeii but it wasn't just Pompeii that suffered catastrophe here, on another side of the mountain, lay the smaller town of Herculaneum. It too was obliterated by fire from the bowels of Vesuvius. Not until the beginning of the 18th century were the remains of Herculaneum discovered. Modern Herculaneum is a bustling, noisy community, but Vesuvius, one of the few volcanoes still active today, continues to loom threateningly over the city. No one knows when the next eruption will take place, nor how devastating it will be. It is just possible that 2,000 years from now, archaeologists will be unearthing this city for the second time. Himaye, an island off the coast of Iceland. Beneath Helgafell, a volcano dormant for 5,000 years, the fishing community of Vestmoniar sleeps peacefully. January 23rd, 1973. Spewing out of a slope of the extinct volcano Helgafell, a malevolent new volcano is spawned. It will soon be named Helfell, Mountain of Fire. It grows quickly, shooting molten lava 300 feet high along a fissure a mile wide. The volcano shoots out explosive fire bombs of lava, some weighing several hundred pounds. Firemen are helpless against the onslaught. Within six hours after the eruption, almost all the 5,000 islanders are evacuated to the Icelandic mainland, 10 miles away. One hundred fifty civil defense workers are left to face the inferno. Icelanders call their special breed of courage, Ugreki a steely calm that in its own way is as awe-inspiring as the volcano itself. As the new volcanic cone mushrooms, the threat increases. The once prosperous community is reduced to a smoldering ghost town. In the first week, 10 million tons of volcanic ash smother the town, threatening to turn it into a modern-day Pompeii. Some evacuees return in an attempt to rescue all they can, from priceless personal mementos to government documents. Hundreds of animals are flown off the island, an airlift that continues despite the ferocity of severe winds and the hazard of falling volcanic ash. The smoking volcanic cone has grown to over 600 feet, and the lava lake begins to rise within the crater. A cauldron 1,200 degrees centigrade, it seethes with poisonous and explosive gases. In the eerie, infernal glow, 
It is easy to believe ancient Icelandic legends which maintain that this is the gateway to hell. March 26th, the north rim of the volcanic cone collapses and the lava lake overflows. A 100-foot wave of molten rock descends toward the town. The human defenders must fight their holding action along a broad front. Thrown into combat like a division of tanks, bulldozers attempt to build dams of volcanic ash to stem the lava tide. But despite their efforts, they are fighting a losing battle. With surface temperatures of 1,000 degrees centigrade, the lava devours everything in its path. If the lava flow isn't stopped, the harbor will be sealed off. The fishing livelihood of the islanders destroyed. The advancing lava reaches the city's vital fish processing plants, and civil defense workers can only stand by in helpless awe at the spectacle of destruction. In one last-ditch gamble to stem the lava flow, they will attempt an ingenious but untried scheme. They will try to cool down the leading edge of the advancing lava with water to form a solid wall that might hold back the flow. Working in heat and poisonous fumes, the men position the hoses as carefully as soldiers aiming artillery. Their work has a special urgency, for if this ploy fails, they know their families will have nothing to come home to. 13,000 tons of seawater an hour are pumped onto the lava. The lava's temperature is finally reduced to 300 degrees. The harbor is saved. Fishing boats will find safe refuge here as they have for a thousand years. As though aware of its defeat, after three and a half months, the raging mountain subsides. While only one human life was lost, one third of the town is buried under volcanic ash forever. After the toxic gases disperse, the survivors are able to return to dig out and rebuild. Unlike the citizens of Herculaneum, Krakatoa, and Pompeii, the people of Haimae have survived a catastrophic volcanic eruption. For perhaps the first time in history, a community has done more than endure the wrath of a volcano. They have triumphed over it. Mount Etna, the Sicilian volcano, occasionally puffs out huge smoke rings, believe it or not. 